You know, they haven't done much in the last two or three series. I hope we get way out in the lead so I can finish my burger. 79 yards of total offense for the Cougars in the first quarter. 247 for the Jackets. This is a, on a Lamarck defense. Rated as one of the best in the state. That had only been given up, what, 146 boots? Is a that, game. Yeah, a game. And Stevenville right on track for their over 500. Well, and not only that, Johnny, how about the Lamarck offense being held to negative five yards in the second quarter? Man, that is impressive. That may be the most impressive playoff stat we've had this year. J.W. Boren getting set to kick off. Back deep is Smith for the Cougars, but I doubt Boren kicks it there. He approaches the ball. End over end pooch kick to the uh, near sideline is caught and taken at the 25 up to about the 30, and then is hammered at the 28-yard line is trying to run backwards on the play with Glover, and he's absolutely obliterated by Cam Ferguson. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. He ran right into the the waiting arms of Ferguson. So it'll be first and 10 for the Cougars, the ball back at the 28-yard line. At one point, Glover was up to the 30. He tried to reverse his field, and when he did, hello. Five punts already in the game. Sean Guidry under center. High formation with Parker and Smith. Pitching back to Smith. Smith across the 30. No, he does not. McCormick and Hodges. Who else is in there for the Jackets? Harmon and Monk just railroading Smith at about the 29 and a half. It'll be a gain of one and a half. Boo, tell me, uh, I, I believe I'm right on this. We came down, tied the score at seven, and then held them to three and out. Then kicked the kicked field, goal. field goal. And I think I remember us discussing this point. Boy, momentum seems to have swung if Mar Lamarck doesn't do something quick. You know, momentum's going to get away from them. Well, we picked up right where we left off momentum-wise at the end of the first half. Second down and a short eight needed for the Cougars. Hand off to Parker. Parker busts his way across the 35, keeps his feet across the 40. He fumbles. Ball is loose. Brady Gunn has gotten on the ball for Stephenville. It will turn over to the Jacket at the 43-yard line of Lamarck. And look at Parker Boots walking off with his head down. And he, and he had a first down and probably five more after that. Harm, I, did, I didn't see who got the strip. Harmon had it. He just dropped it. He was trying to switch hands. He was. He was trying to switch hands. You're right. He lost the ball. Browse jumped on top of him. And then Brady Gunn jumped on the football at the 43 of Lamarck. Oh, brother, look out. Stephenville has scored the last three times they've had the ball, Boots. 11.07 here in the Rent City Superstore third quarter. Stephenville 17, Lamarck 7. Look Luke at Parker under center. on the sideline. Everybody hanging around him. Motion to the near side is Evan. Inside trap. Hey, faking the trap is Kellen running the option, pitching out to Hunter. He goes Ooh. out of bounds at the 37-yard line, and he took a big pop. Man, that was, uh, was that 14? Yes, the free safety Paul Edmond, who really put a pop on Hunter. What a play, faking the trap and then running the option to the near side. Isn't that one we saw earlier? I think it is. Not earlier today, but... Yesterday in the green room. Okay, I wasn't going to say that. You can say it. Okay. Six yards on the option play for the Jackets. Sets up second and four from the Lamarck 37-yard line. Two backs behind Luker under center. The tailback is Ebbett coming to the near side. Inside trap, we do give the ball to Carwell. Carwell will get to about the 35, a pickup of two on the play. It'll set up third down and two. Not a bad call there because Cody ran clean the first time through, and hey, why not go back to it and see if it's there? Third and two for the Jackets at the 35-yard line. They need to get just inside the 33. Boy, Stephenville really needs to go in and score here, Boots. And I would guarantee they're in four-down territory if they don't get it right here. Douglas splits far to the far side. Evett comes in motion to the near side. Luker is under center. Throwing the quick hit to Carwell. Open. Great move. Spin. 25 down to the 20-yard line. A first down for the Jackets at the 20-yard line. The play will go for 15 yards, and it's first and 10. Sting Mill at the Cougar 20. Remember we talked about that, Boots, uh, that they were going to run that play this week, move Cardwell a little closer to the line, split him out away from the defensive end, fake that dive. How many times was it there when we watched the game film last week? Like three or four times, Kellen never threw it. Always handed off to Ferrazes. I'm sure that worked out to where it set up that play for this week. Twins to the near side. Eye formation behind Luker. Double tight end set. Now the fullback Cardwell comes in motion to the near side. 
play action, giving the ball a draw, goes to Hunter, gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Man, I'm telling you, that defensive tackle, number eight, Calvin Bradley, Bradley is a man. He is really playing tough up the middle and fast. That is his territory, and he says, you're not coming in here. Look at him talking to the defense right now. And any play for Stephenville that takes a little bit to develop any kind of time. Ooh, he's there. <laughs> Lamarck has just got incredible speed to get to the football. Well, this is the fourth time now Stephenville's been in the red zone. They've scored on the previous three. Make it 53 in a row for the Jackets. Jackets will send four receivers to the far side, one receiver to the near side. Luker under center. There's only three defensive backs on the four receiver set. Luker setting up. He's in some trouble. He'll escape. He'll go to the far side, and he'll be sacked all the way back at the 28-yard line. And look at Cardwell. He was at the goal line, and I didn't see anybody around him, but Luker didn't have a chance to get the ball off because he was in a lot of trouble. Well, that was just a uh, that was just an all-out rush there by the defense. And when they've needed to do that, it's been there. And, boy, you, you really see the speed there of that defense. But it's a lot of times this year when Kellen broken the initial pressure he's been able to run for 10 or 15 yards nope. not that time right. not on this defense two receivers to the near side one to the far side double wing back set they are split on both sides as luker is in shotgun they need to get about 17 for the first rolling to the near side is luker setting up looking to throw has a receiver it's away over the head of evidence he turned up at the 10 yard line on the curl luker thought he was running the deep play and so the ball goes over his head Hard to say, John, who's got the call there. Does Evett get to make the call and turn the curl off at the 10 for the first down, or uh, Luker going ahead and throwing it deep? Well, I don't know. I think I think the deep route was probably the one that uh, they wanted. I mean, you might as well throw it to the end zone. But what, what Evett did, he just ran to the first down marker and turned around. And either way he'd have gone, it'd have been a first down. But Luker and Evett just don't quite execute. Stephen will attempt a long field goal, but Lamarck takes a timeout, so we'll take one with him. 8.28 to go in the Rent City Superstore third quarter. Stephen 17, Lamarck 7, back in one minute on KSTV. There's a new star in town, Techstar Ford Lincoln Mercury. Come see the difference for yourself. New owners, anxious to win your business with the best possible deals. New hours, open weekdays till 7 and now open Saturday till 6. And most of all, new attitude. You'll love dealing with the friendly people at Techstar. If you don't buy from us, it won't be because of the price. Techstar, Ford, Lincoln, Mercury, Stephenville. The little man from Fox is standing at about the 30-yard line with a big red glove, and he stays out there until they come back from a TV timeout. Hey, I wonder if we could get something like that set up during the regular year. Well, I don't know if he's available during the regular year. <laughs> <laughs> well, we recruit our own guy to do yeah, this, not go. to let the referees... Uh, Start until we come back from timeout. That might be a good job for uh, Steve Ross. Ross, do you want to go out on the field and start stopping the officials during the regular season, or do you like your current gig? I kind of like where I am right now, Boots. All right. Hey, great, great stand by the defense that time, hey eh, Ross? They're just showing up when they need to, making plays. We'll see if JW can kick this. Not his longest of the year, but he's got the range. 44-yard attempt coming. From j -Dub, the snap back, the hold down, the kick is on the way. It's got enough. If it's straight, it is good. From 44 yards, J.W. Bourne connects, and Stephenville extends their lead 20-7 to at the 8-22 mark of the third quarter. We're back in one minute on KSTV. Steel has been building quality chainsaws since 1926. Bill's Lawnmower Shop has been providing quality power equipment service since 1966. For an experienced team that can provide excellent service and reliable chainsaws, look to Steele and Bill's Lawnmower Shop. Back deep for the Cougars, number six, David Smith, as J.W. Morgan gets set to kick off, but he's kicked the short pooch kick to the near side every time so far in the game. He does again. High kick will be taken by Glover out of the 25. He's tripped up at about the 29-yard line. Kendall Bryles, the first man there that got the feet of Glover. At the 29 is where the Cougars start first to 10, trailing Stephenville 20 to 7. John, the last scoring drive. Seven plays, 57 yards. It took 2.45 off the clock. Bourne with a 44-yard field goal. Stephenville now up 20 to 7. That scoring summary brought to you by BMW Auto Sales. On the southeast loop. Yes. Hey, uh, Lamarck better do something right here, Boots. Oh, this yep. game's going to get away from them in a hurry. Realize there's still 20 minutes of football left to play, but... Each one of these drives get more and more important. All right, Gidry is under center. Play action, setting up, looking to throw is Gidry. Throwing out, catch, and then drop. Oh, look at the coaching staff of Lamarck sitting next to me, screaming about the pass being dropped but by Ben Locke at the tight end. I think we've had our question answered. 
Which question was that? About uh, would they start panicking and get out of their game plan? This is not their game plan. You well, can bet on that. They ended the said. first half that way. They've come right back out in the second half throwing the ball. We talked about it. We said if the defense holds and then Steamwell gets any kind of score, would they get out of it? You see right off the bat they play action and try to throw the ball. Dropped by Ben Lockett. Would have been very close to the yardage needed for the first down. Instead, it's second and ten. Draw play coming to Smith. Smith is hammered by Hodges at about the 29-yard line. Also, Harmon in there as well. It'll be third down and 10. Man, I'm telling you, Jack Hodges, stand in the middle, baby, and stand your ground. Hodges and Harmon, as you said, man, they're just whipping that offensive line of the Mark Cougars. You remember what Coach Brown said to you in the pregame interview? This game is going to come down to who wins in the trenches. Right now, Stephenville's winning on both sides of the ball. 741 and counting here in the Rent City Superstore. Third quarter, Stephenville 20, Lamarck 7, third of 10 for the Cougars. I wonder when the last time this year, Steve, uh, Lamarck was behind 13 points, if ever, seven minutes to go in the third quarter. I don't think they have been this year. Twins to the far side, two backs behind Gidry. It is Parker and Smith. Gidry in a lot of trouble. We'll try to throw the ball. It's up for grabs. It's incomplete. Gidry had a huge rush on top of him as coming in for the Jackets. Was that Monk? No, Mercer was on a safety blitz and as Jilton. well as Jilson. Gidry was in all kinds of trouble. He just had to throw that ball up for grabs, and it was around no one. Well, Boots, they just ran a great stunt as Hodges went down in that uh, in that uh, nose guard position, and they ran a, a little a little switch, a little curl on, on the defensive line, just a great stunt, and they ran scot-free, and it's three and out. Lamarck, with seven minutes remaining in the third quarter, out of three plays on a drive, tried to pass twice. Snap back to Kuko. His kick is away. Wobbly kick that will hit at the 45-yard line of Stephenville. Go to about the 43-yard line, and that's where Stephenville will begin. First and 10, good field position at their own 43-yard line at the 7:09 mark of the Rent City Superstore. Third quarter, Stephenville 20, Lamarck 7. 38-yard punt, no return, and boy, this thing is uh, getting a little scary, I'm sure, for the Lamarck fans. Remember, it was 7 nothing at the end of the first quarter, and Boots, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, no team had scored over 16 points on them this year? Is that right? That's correct. Steamville has now scored 20. You see the uh, Lamar Cougars now only 95 yards of total offense, and Steamville picking up huge numbers. Looker is under center. He sends Evan in motion to the near side. Inside trap to Cardwell. Cardwell will go for two yards. He'll get to the 45-yard line. Stephenville is determined to try to make that play work or using it to set something else. Up. Well, and it, it burns a lot of clock, too. So you're, let's see, when when did uh, this possession start? What was How much was on the clock? Okay, just over seven minutes. About 7.08. So, see, they just now started the 25-second clock. Is that Browse with the dyed hair? Is that what that is? That is him. He dyed his hair? It's almost orange. <laughs> Are you talking about Kendall or Art? Uh, no, Kendall. <laughs> okay, thank you. Luker is in shotgun with like, Hunter standing next to him. I don't think Art will get into this frenzy. Trips to the far <laughs> side, one receiver near side. Snap back to Hunter. Hunter giving the ball, getting the ball from Luker. He'll go forward for no gain. Steve is determined, as I said on the last play, to try to make the run work. But, John, you talked about running the clock. Don't you think it's a little early to try to just get conservative? Oh, I don't think they're being conservative. They're just trying to keep that defensive line off of uh, Kellen Luker. Now you're in an obvious passing down. Let's see if they just the defense brings everybody. Let's watch uh, for Cardwell maybe on that little hot pass again. He's set up at the wing. Third and eight. Play action rolling to the near side is Luker. Great blocks downfield. Throwing caught inbounds. Great catch at the 45-yard line by Cardwell. Just getting his feet inbounds. What a wonderful catch on the near sideline. Stephenville fans. Steamville fans, look at this. Now, he just broke the record. Cody Cardwell now 112 receptions on the year. That breaks the single-season reception record as well. Uh, Steamville fans, enjoy this. You're seeing some incredible offensive players on this. You may not see players like this for a long time in the state of Texas. Unless you're watching on Saturday afternoons. Luker under center. Good point. Sends Evan in motion to the far side. Inside trap handoff to Hunter. Hunter will go for one yard. Maybe this is the plan, John. You run two running plays in a row, <laughs> run a bunch of clock, and then throw about a 10 to 15 yard pass to get the first down and then move the chains. Yeah, Stephenville not stretching the defense at all right now, just trying to move the sticks. And really that's all they have to do and see if they can wear down this Lamarck defense. 
you got to think sooner or later these guys are going to run down. Second and nine for the Jackets ball at the 45-yard line of Lamarck. Stephenville 20, Lamarck 7 at the 521 mark. Luker under center. Sends Hunter in motion to the near sideline. Play action. Luker setting up. Looking to throw. Has Carvel deep, but he'll go for Evan. Caught. 15, 10 to the five-yard line. He's finally tackled there. Stephenville will have first to go to go at the five-yard line. And now a little smack talk going on in the backfield between the uh, defensive back of Lamarck, number 30. That's John That's Lewis that. and Cody Cardwell. 51 yards on the reception from Luker to Evan. Well... Talk all you want, <laughs> Mr. Liz. <laughs> you just got beat. Boy, and Kellen Luker, take your choice who you want to throw too deep. You had a lot of receivers open deep that time. Man, Evan having a big day today. Well, he, he and Cody had big days last week. Now over 100 yards for Chris Evan. Kendall Browles in running the short yardage offense for the Jackets. Three backs behind him, handing off to the second man through. That's Ferraz. It's over the top. Touchdown. Jimmy Barras is from five yards out, extends the lead for Stephenville. 26 to 7 with the extra point coming at the 4, 49 mark of the Rent City Superstore third quarter. Man, how impressive is that? If you're not going to move the ball, I'll tell you what, fellas, we will. And this is a shocked Lamarck crowd right now. Stephenville getting set for the extra point. Kill will have the snap. Steed will have the hold. Snap back. Hold down. J.W. Boren's kick is on the way. It is up and it is good. With 4.49 remaining in the third quarter. Stephenville 27, Lamarck 7. We're back in one minute on KSTV. Whether on or off the field, success requires focus, knowledge, and action. At Investment Centers of America, we focus on your goals, offer you our cumulative knowledge of investments, and recommended actions that fit your objectives. We enjoy being your coach, but you're the quarterback. After all, it is your money. Investment Centers of America, Town and Country Bank Building, Stephenville. Investment Centers of America. We know the territory. The Olympic Decathlon. Ten events, two days. You gotta run, throw, jump, and hurdle. And you gotta do it better than anybody in the world. Building a community. Hundreds of programs, one vision. You gotta train, support, counsel, encourage, and guide. And you've gotta help bring everybody together to make it happen. Only one organization does all that. That's United Way. That's the power of you. Welcome back, Texas Stadium, 449 to go. In the third quarter, Steamville 27, Lamar 7. JW Bourne now with 80. Four extra points on the season, Boots. That ties him for second all-time in the state of Texas in a season. One more gives him second place outright. Now, I know he was approaching the consecutive extra point as well. He has 68 now. Let me look that up for you. It's on the next page right after that top left. 68. Puts him in second place all by himself. Does he have a chance of getting the uh, consecutive? Uh, that would be 76. <laughs> I don't think I don't think we're going to get to those levels, but who knows? Well, there's a lot of time left. 4:49 to go here in the Rent City Superstore third quarter. Stephenville 27, Lamarck 7. That last scoring drive, six plays, 57 yards, took 2:20 off the clock. Frazes on the five-yard run. That brought to you by River North Small Animal Hospital. J.W. Boren getting set. The kick is away. High end over end kick. This is to the middle of the field, and it will be fair caught at the 23-yard line. Making the fair catch was Olin Gamble, and that's where the Cougars start. First and 10th, they're on 23. And, John, I'm going to tell you this. If Lamarck at least doesn't get a few first downs, this one could get very ugly. Yeah, it may get out of hand for him uh, in a big, big hurry. Hey, Johnny, look at this. Steve Steed being interviewed right now by Fox Southwest. He was one of the originators of the can fans. And I'm sure that's a little bit of what the conversation is about right now. Kudos to him. High formation. Pitching back to Smith. Smith is hammered by Hodges. Whoa, whoa. Right behind the line of scrimmage. Maybe to the line of scrimmage he returned to, but nothing more than that. Jack Hodges. Honorable mention. Should have been first or second team. <laughs> I'm telling you, he, he's playing first team in this game. Did you hear Did you hear Steve Ross's quote at halftime? What was that? With Jack Hodges made a big play in the first half. His dad was down there by Steve. He turned around and he said, I've never seen Jack play like this. 
He acts like this is the last game he's ever going to play. <laughs> well, it is for Stephenville anyway. Right. Once again, Sean Guidry under center, rolling to the near side, looking to throw, in some trouble. We'll throw out the flats, cut. A good catch is made at the 38-yard oh, line. That was a great catch. Because a couple of the jackets hit him right when contact came at the 38, and one of the jacket defensive backs, I think John Even, was trying to go for the interception. Yeah, I think you're right. Was that Lockett that caught that? Coming up were Browles and Mercer, and they hit Lockett, the tight end, right when he made the catch at the 39-yard line. It is a first down. And I will tell you, though, John, if Lockett had dropped back-to-back -back passes, coaching staff may have jumped out of the booth sitting yeah. right next to me right here. That was a great catch. Well, that was a big first down. They needed that. Draw play. Faking the draw is Gidry. In some trouble. He'll throw this ball out. The flats is up for grabs. Knocked away and then intercepted and then dropped. Was that Chilson? Oh, no, man. McCormick. McCormick almost made a diving interception after Gunn and Browse knocked the ball away from Lockett at the last second. Boy, and Gidry was almost sacked back at the 34-yard line. Boy, that defense is coming. They're pinning their ears back now, brother. Here they come. Second out and 10. 3.43 to go in the Rent City Superstore. Third quarter. Stephenville 27. Lamarck 7. Second and 10 for Lamarck at their own 39-yard line. Gidry on a keeper. He'll go forward for one yard, maybe. And then he is driven back three yards on the play by Clark Boone. Harmon was the first one there, and Boone finished him off. Third down and nine coming up for the Cougars. And, John, when you're down by 20 points and you do not have an explosive offense, it is so difficult to try to come back in a football game. Yeah, you're right. You know, um, we all pretty much thought going into this game if Stephenville could get up three touchdowns, that Lamarck would be in trouble. Well, that's where they are right now. Third and ten officially. No gain on the last play. So Gidry's under center, needing ten yards for the first. Eye formation behind him. Split receivers both sides. Running the draw, no Gidry will keep it and try to throw it. Now he'll be sacked all the way back to the 29-yard line. Craig Park. Park, the first man there, and drug him down. And Gidry John looks like a man that is so confused in that backfield trying to throw the football because you know he is not used to throwing the ball this many times. Boots, there's 11 guys on the uh, sideline. We need to holler at Ross after this, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure we're, we pretty well know what Coach Copeland is going to say. There's 11 guys playing defense for Stephenville right now who's probably really tired of hearing about the other side of the ball. Hey, we're pretty good, too. Kuko gets a snap back. The punt for the Lamarck Cougar punter is not very good. It hits out of bounds. Oh. Somewhere still in Stephenville territory. We'll wait for the spot. It didn't even go 20 yards, I don't think. 20 yards. Right at the 50-yard mark, or maybe the 49 of Lamarck. You're exactly right. 20 yards is the kick. And it was Stephenville will start in Cougar territory. Where, where's Steve? He's right down there in the middle of it. Well, let's let's go to him after the. We do we have time? No, he's listening in. Let's wait till he gets through there. But you, I mean, you know, Coach Copeland said it early on. Our defense is better than their offense. Guys, just stay with it. We'll turn this thing around. Boy, he was exactly right. First and 10 for the Jackets at the Cougar 49-yard line. Luker is in shotgun formation. Snap back, rolling to the near side. Looking to throw the deep ball on the far sideline. Has Carville. It's way under thrown and then dropped. Kellen Luker had Carville on the far sideline, but Luker was trying to throw that ball about 50 yards across the field. And yeah, that was just good defense, too. They had it. And just really didn't get a good throw on the ball, John. Hey, I mean, he tried to air that one out, and I think I, if you ask Kellen, he'd wish he had that one over again. Let's go to Steve Ross on the sideline. Stevie? All right, Boots and John. Coach Mike Copeland told his defense, as hard as you play for the last five minutes, you got to play harder for the next 14. That's all you want is 14 more minutes out of you guys. Thank you, Steve. Kellen Luker in shotgun, running the option inside trap to Hunter. Hunter across the 45, makes the move 40, inside the 35, down to the 30 to the 29-yard line. A pickup of 20 yards on the play, and Stephenville has first and 10 at the 29-yard line. First and 10 for the Jackets at the 29-yard line. Stephenville giving the ball to Hunter on the inside trap. Well, I think Shane's trying to call, but we can't answer the phone. <laughs> it's first and 10 for the Jackets inside the Cougar 29-yard line. Shane, sorry, we can't figure out how to work that. Justin's gone. 
<laughs> He'll be back in a minute. Luker is under center, sends Carwell in motion to the far side. Inside trap, handoff to Hunter, trying to get a little seam. He'll go for two yards this time. And, Johnny, how impressive for the first time we saw the inside running play get some great positive yardage. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. And uh, I, you knew eventually uh, Hunter was going to, he was going to break one up. So it's now second down and eight for the Jackets. Stephenville needs to stick this one in, and that uh, that's going to be close to doing it for this game. Are we going to get the caps out at that point? No. Okay. Luker and shotgun rolling to the near side. Pump fake, looking to throw. He's in some trouble. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that will be about it. It'll be third down and eight for the Jackets at the 28-yard line. Well, we're getting close. We're getting close to uh, J.W. Borden field goal range now. Well, actually, we're in J.W. Boren's field goal range. He had a 47 last week, you'll recall. Right now, if they had to kick it, it would be about a 46 or 47 yard field goal. So I'm, I'm sure Coach Browse here just happy to take some time off the clock. And then you're talking about kicking a field goal right at the end of the third quarter, going into the fourth. If need be. Jackets have four receivers to the far side. Luker rolling that way in shotgun, setting up, looking, looking, throwing the deep ball up, and it's intercepted. Back at the eight-yard line, not a good pass from Luker as it's picked off. Evett was starting to clear at the goal line, and Luker underthrew it. It was picked off and returned out to about the 13. Uh, Kellen tried to force that one in. Not a, not a good play by that young man, but hey. <laughs> After all the play, other plays that he made, I, I think that's acceptable. John Lewis made the interception, the uh, outside cornerback. You know, Boots, it's getting cold in this stadium. I just noticed that. 26 seconds to go here in the Rent City Superstore third quarter. I think Lamarck felt that chill about 30 minutes ago. 27-7 right now, Stephenville on top. Still a lot of football to play. Gedry under center, two backs behind him. And now the give is to Smith. Check that Parker. Parker will be hammered at about the 15 after a one-yard gain, and then he struck backwards about two yards. See if, you can get, see if you can guess who the first guy was. Jack Hodges? You are correct, sir. And uh, the Steve Mill defense, you can tell right now, is having a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, this, this game's played right into their hand, right where they want it. That's the end of the Rent City Superstore third quarter. Congratulations to Joyce Langford. You'll win the final Rent City Superstore third quarter contest of the year. Go by Rent City and pick up your VCR come Monday. They'll take care of you over there at the Stephen Mill Plaza. We go to the fourth quarter. Stephen Mill up 27-7. to We're back in one minute on KSTV. Hello, friends. This is Greg Bruner for Bruner Motors, sitting on top of my old friend bus here. You may think this is a lot of bull, but I've got some specials that are no bull deals for you. GM certified used cars and trucks which have gone through an extensive 110 point inspection and come standard with a 12 month or 12,000 mile factory bumper to bumper warranty. On behalf of our 90 employees, come on down to any of our three locations for your no bull deal. And by the way, we appreciate your business. The Stephenville Athletic Booster Club wants to say thank you to Northland Cable for backing the jackets and generously providing the time for this broadcast. We come here on a glorious quest, a search for that which can be found nowhere else. Where, in the trenches where mighty men clash, amidst the echoes of glory's past, high atop Olympus, oh, this is our quest. This is what football is all about. Now all I gotta do is find that nacho guy. Official attendance here for the Texas Bowl State Championship, Class 4A, over 17,000. Yeah, and a bunch of them are from Stephenville. <laughs> I'm guessing close to 10. We enter the Techstar Ford fourth quarter, 12 minutes to play. A lifetime to remember for these Stephen Mill Yellow Jackets as they lead 27 to 7 over Lamarck. Second down and eight for the Cougars at their own 16 yard line. Gidry under center. Pitching back to Parker, out across the 15, gets outside across the 20, knocked out of bounds at about the 22 yard line, 23. You know, Boots, they really went away from him early in the game, don't you think? Well, you saw him leave at one point kind of gimpy do you think he got hurt at any point well yeah but that was in the second half i mean i just 
I just really think they panicked early in this game and got out of their game plan, which is what Coach Browse thought they would do if he if he could get them where he needed them. Larry Walker, this is his first year to come back and head coach Lamarck. John, he has not been in any games I can think that he'd be behind in, and I'm sure he might be panicking a little bit. John, some of those uh, third-quarter numbers. Only 80 yards rushing for Lamarck. Remember, they were averaging over 200, about 211 a game and less than 100 uh, passing, of course, and uh, for a total of 103. So that means they had minus five in the second and 24 in the third quarter. Lamarck is about half a yard short of the yardage needed for the first down. So since the first quarter, what, 20, or 19 yards in total offense? That's it. Lamarck, Gidry, under center, running the quarterback sneak. He'll get to the 24 and then be backed up. He got a good spot almost to the 25, and so this will be a first down. Boy, McCormick just stuffed him along with Browse and Gunn. But you're right, he was enough for the first down. That's something they needed. Boy, and I'm guessing it can't be more than two or three first downs in the second half either. Oh, I wouldn't think so. Two. Two boots. In the total second half, two. And then how many were in the second quarter where they had negative five yards? It couldn't have been any. Yeah. I mean, they were just... Since the end of the first quarter, this team has two first downs for Lamarck. First and ten for them at their own 25. Gidry throwing out in the flats. Ball is caught by Glover at about the 31-yard line. A pickup of six. It'll be second down and four. Ryan Harris playing pretty soft there in the secondary and uh, playing off of him about five yards, and that's about what he got. Well, maybe six. Again, they have not shown they can really uh, successfully throw the ball, although Gidry is a pretty good quarterback. I mean, he's got a good arm, better than what we saw from, um, I guess, uh, Hershey, of course, in Pampa. Makes you wonder if he was put into a passing offense, how much he could develop. He's got good feet, too. He moves around well. Second and four, offset eye behind Gidry again. Giving on the draw, going to Smith. Smith trying to get to the corner. He does. Out of the 35, and then McCormick just rides him to the ground at about the 38. It's about seven yards on the game. It's enough for a first. I'm sure Coach Copeland says you guys can do all that you want. Has five or six yards at a whack, and we'll just watch all the clock. Minutes roll off the clock. Boy, Lamarck looks tired on offense, don't they? 10.46 and counting here in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. That offensive line ought to be tired because they've been whipped <laughs> in this game. <laughs> Twins to the near side, eye formation again behind Gidry. Gidry setting up, looking to throw. He's in some trouble, being chased by Mercer. He'll throw it in the flat. It's picked off by Jack Hodges. Jack Hodges intercepts the ball. He goes out of bounds in the 46-yard line of Lamarck. Mercer hit Gidry when he threw it. It came up short. Hodges the, was right there. Give him the game ball for crying out loud. Good grief. He has just been everywhere. Hodges was in great position. He stepped up in front of Parker, who was the intended receiver, and made the interception at the 45-yard line. Remember the speech that Jack made earlier in the year to, to his team. Fellas, this is going to be my last season as the Stephenville Yellow Jackets. I want to win a state championship. Let's work hard and do just that. And boy, he's led by example all year long, and how about this is the biggest game of his life. Split receivers to both sides. Kellen Luker under center, eye formation behind him. Giving the ball over the left side is Hunter. He's in all kinds of trouble, and he'll be thrown down for about a two-yard loss. Yeah, and uh, boy, this is where you mentioned this coming out of the half, uh, Boots. This is where uh, Stephenville all year long has gone for the gone for the juggler. They can they can put them away right here. Boy, Art Browse has gotten very conservative here in the second half. You can tell with the lead he's got and knowing what his defense has been doing against Lamarck. He, he can just do that. does right. He just doesn't want to do anything for a big turnover type situation that would give Lamarck new life. 956 and counting. Stephenville 27. Lamarck seven. Evett in motion to the far sideline, giving the ball straight ahead to Ferrosis. Ferrosis will get two yards. Maybe one. It'll be third down and 10 or 11, and look for Jackets to pass here just enough to get the first down. Well, maybe that Cody Cardwell out. Let's see. Today, one, two, three, four records have been broken by this offense. And this defense has done a whale of a job. Third down and 11 for the Jackets. They need to get just inside the 36-yard line of Lamarck. Luker, play action, rolling to the near side, setting up, looking to throw the ball out. It's un it's overthrown. 
A.B. Combs was the intended receiver, and Luker had to throw that ball a little bit before he wanted to, and so he kind of threw that one away from Combs. It's incomplete. It'll set up fourth down and 10, and Evett will come out and punt. All right, we'll take uh, we'll take two minutes off the board. We'll kick. We'll pin you down inside the 20-yard line. I'll do that deal for the rest of this afternoon. 27 to 7. I'm sure our Browns will be very happy winning the ball game like that. He'd be happy to win 8 to 7, but he'll, <laughs> he'll be elated to win 27 to 7. Snap back to Evett. Kick is away. High kick that will be taken at the 19-yard line by Glover, and he's tackled immediately back at the 16. Glover elected to try to run with the football, and the jacket coverage team was all over him. 25 on the punt and minus 3 where they spot the ball. Brady Gunn was one of the first people in there on the uh, tackle. Just great hang time by Evett, giving him a chance to, his uh, offense a chance to get down there as kick team. He'll take a timeout on the field. We'll take one with him. 9.06 remaining here in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. Stephenville 27. Well, I don't think the guy from Fox got his attention. He did not. They will not go to the commercial. We'll stay right here. Gidry is under center. Two backs behind him at the 17. Gidry looking to throw. Throwing the deep ball on the far sideline. It's up. Incomplete. Ryan Harris with good coverage on the play running step for step with anytime you can run step for step, John, with anyone named Nehemiah. Look at him. He's going out there to tell the official, hey, we need a timeout. We were trying to take one and your official didn't see me. <laughs> well, he'll be told now. We're Fox. We're TV. We're running this deal. <laughs> well, those guys just aren't uh, used to this on the high school level, I'm sure. Well, these guys are Big 12 officials, too, so nine minutes remaining after the incompletion. It's second down and 10. Ball at the 18-yard line officially. Draw play going to Parker. Parker will be stacked up for a loss back at the 15-yard line. P.J. Mercer and McCormick were there for Stephenville on the loss. It'll be third down and 13 upcoming for Lamarck. You know, John, on the big this game's over, KSTV <laughs> Bring the Ring uh, sign we made this week, yeah. Steve Ross wrote up there that Lamarck means in French, bring a uh, massacre. Well, I think it's there. Hey, look at in the end zone. That's the Dallas Cowboy mascot. Oh, oh hey. With a Stephenville flag strutting his stuff for the Yellow Jackets. <laughs> How about that? Wow. He knows this game's over, too. Third and 12, set up Gidry, rolling out, looking to throw, still looking, throwing out the flats. It's caught, and a flag is down. The pass was caught one yard short of the yardage needed for the first down, and I think this will be pass interference against Stephenville. Got there. Everything from floor mats to bed liners, grill guards, bumpers, running boards, diamond tread toolboxes, and bed caps, and lots more. And best of all, you pick it out, and Cowboy Pickup Supply will install it while you wait. From the street truck to the ranch truck, you'll find everything you want at Cowboy Pickup Supply next door to Red Top on Highway 377. Cowboy Pickup Supply, your one stop pickup shop. Welcome back. Phone lines went dead here at Texas Stadium. On the last play, Lamarck caught a ball one yard short of the first down. It was caught by Willard Smith. There was pass interference on the play against Stephenville, so the automatic first down on the defensive pass interference is accepted. Lamarck has it first and 10 at their own 26-yard line. Snap back to Gidry. Gidry in some trouble. He'll throw across the middle. It's almost picked off by McCormick. He had it in his hands, couldn't quite hold on. Boy. Second and 10. That was not a good pass by Gidry McCormick. <laughs> He's going to be mad at himself. He should have had that one. Boy, this fourth quarter is taking a long time with as many passes are being thrown by both sides of the ball. Somebody give the Dallas Cowboy mascot a stigma flag instead of that Cowboy flag. Yeah. Gidry is in shotgun snap back to him setting up. Looking to throw, throwing the deep ball on the far sideline. It's up and knocked away at the last moment over the head of the intended receiver. Wasn't even catchable. Was it Parker, the intended receiver? Yeah. Bryles was back there on coverage with Gunn. That is number no, 15, I think it is. That is Mario Whitaker. Yeah. He was the intended receiver. So it's third and 10 for the Cougars at their own 26-yard line. 7.38 to go here in the Tech Star Ford fourth quarter. Stephenville 27, Lamarck 7. And it's chop time, I think. You hear the band.
Third down and 10 for the Cougars out at the 26-yard line. Gidry under center, straight drop. No, it's a draw. Giving the ball to Parker, and he's tackled behind the line by Jack Hodges. Oh, man, what a game for Jack. Hey, John, you know that uh, CD-ROM interactive game called You Don't Know Jack? Yeah. Well, Lamarck does now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they sure know him. Well, and that's a that's a Lamarck team that's got to be frustrated. Their reign of state championships are going to come to an end at three in a row. And it wasn't just in a rain. It was in a thunderstorm. And they cannot they cannot beat the Steamville Yellow Jackets. It is going to just be something that haunts the Lamarck Cougars. Cougars comes when it's blocked. It's up for the grab, and Hartman tries to catch it. He can't pick it up, but finally it's grabbed by one of the Cougars, and they're running at the 30-yard line. This ball will come back as it will be illegal touching by Lamarck. Craig Parks got in and blocked the ball. I believe that's who that was, Boots. This ball will come all the way back to where Lamarck grabbed the football at around the 21. Now the flag will be... Illegal touching, I believe, against Lamarck, it is. And so the ball will, since it's, it's a post-kick foul, let's wait and watch. Uh, Kuko is ready to punt. Hodges, I should say, Parks makes the stop. It's yep. up for grabs and almost grabbed by one, Gordon Carroll. Oh, An man. illegal bat is made by one of the Cougars who spatted the ball away. So, John, the question is, where he hit the ball at 20 is probably the line of scrimmage for Stephenville. Right. But do you add penalty yardage from there? Yeah, there's a flag on the play. Or do you have to decline it to keep the football since it was after the block? There we go. Let's see. It yep. is declined, so they have to decline it to keep the ball, and they will take over the ball at the 33-yard line because that's where the end of the illegal yep. bat occurred. Yeah, if you take the penalty, you move it back to 20, mark off the yardage, and they do it again. Right, or you can take the football where the illegal play came to an end if you decline it, and that's what Steve Mo likes to do. Well, that's just a fitting end to the uh, Lamarck offense today, Boots. First and 10 for Stephenville at the Lamarck 33-yard line. 6.46 to go in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. Stephenville 27, Lamarck 7. Kellen under center. Giving on the reverse to the near side. With some running room is Hunter inside the 30. He breaks away 25 out of bounds at about the 16-yard line. And he just punished number four. Is that four? Gidry in there? It is. Also, Jeremy Cargill, the near side cornerback... He just got blown away by Hunter, who just went right by him on the play. And watch how Hunter puts the Jets. It goes right by Cargill. Oh, it's number two. It wasn't four. It was two. That was O'Shea, O'Shea Griffin. Griffin. <laughs> what a great name, O'Shea. One that did a lot of talking. Luker under center of the ball at the 16-yard line of Lamarck. Inside trap, no faking. Pitching out to Carville down to the 15, to the 13, to the 12-yard line. A pickup of about five on the play. It'll be second and five from right out the 12-yard line. And, Johnny, once again, the Stephenville offense is inside the red zone. They've scored every time today inside the uh, red zone. Steve Russ uh, been down on the sideline all year long. Uh, is it getting fun down there now, brother? Well, it's getting close. Everybody has their fingers crossed. Nobody wants to celebrate too early, but it is a lot of fun down here. We're going to talk to some players on the field as soon as the ball game's over. Great. Great idea. And look at the Fox official with the red glove finally getting the <laughs> attention of the referee, and they will call an extended timeout, I believe. We'll wait and see, or have they? The referee looks at the guy from Fox and says, you back up. Okay. So is it a timeout or is it not? I don't know, but he waved him off. Well, there was a injured, injured player play. on the field for the mark. They have walked him off the field. Are they going to have a timeout or not? The uh, referee looks to the near sideline. That is number 12 for Lamarck, uh, Adrian Alexander, defensive end. Well, we are at a we are at a timeout. But he'll roll the clock with 23 seconds left. So the TV got a little confused, and now they bring it back. It'll be second down. Not quite as good a spot as I thought. Only four yards on the carry. Kellen Luker will bring him up to the line with T.J. Douglas split to the near side. Second and six. Luker is under center from the Lamarck 12-yard line. Looking, going the quick header. It's caught down to about the three-yard line. A.B. Combs making a great quick-hitting catch from Luker at the three, and it's first and goal to go at the three-yard line. (laughs) 
Hey, Boots, if we could get word to Coach Browse, let's let him throw a touchdown pass. He has 49 on the season. I'd just like to see him get another One more 50. gives him 50? Yeah. I wonder if any of our coaches are listening to us right now. <laughs> I'm sure he's not really worried about all that. Well, well Luker has come yeah. out of the game. So Bryles will run the short yardage offense. First and goal to go at the three-yard line. Handoff to Ferraz. It's Ferraz is down to the one. It'll be second and goal to go from the one. Well, this is... Johnny, is this a little bit of something we might see next year as uh, Kendall Bryles trots to the sideline and talks to his dad about the next play? Honestly, I don't know, and right now, I don't care. <laughs> I just want to enjoy this. <laughs> 508 and counting here in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. Stephenville 27, Lamarck 7. Second and goal to go from inside the one. Kendall Bryles under center, three backs behind him. Give to the first man through. That's Tinklingberg. Very close. Touchdown. Matt Tinklingberg gets the touchdown for Stephenville, and they extend. 33 to 7 with the PAT coming at the 453 mark of the fourth quarter. Well, Stephenville fell behind 7 to nothing, and came back and tied it at 7 in early in the second quarter, halfway through the second quarter, and it's been all Stephenville offense and all Stephenville defense ever since. J Dub getting set for the extra point. Snap by Keel. Is back to Steed. Hold down. Kick is on the way. It is up. And it is good with 4.53 to go here in the <laughs> red six, excuse me, the Texas, gosh, everybody, the coaching staff almost ran us over, lost all trade of thought. Next star Ford, fourth quarter, Stephenville 34, Lamarck 7, we're back in one minute on KSTV. If children are a blessing, then grandchildren are truly a gift. They renew our hope, they recapture our youth. And as grandparents, you want to give them something in return. Your local State Farm agent has just the thing. It's the gift of life insurance. And as your grandchildren grow, you can add to the policy to help give them financial security for many years to come. So let your nearby State Farm agent help you ensure that their days will be as bright as they've made yours. Supporting the Jackets for over 30 years. Bill Tomlinson, class of 67. David Tomlinson, class of 71. The Stephenville Funeral Home. Your family's friend in time of need in Stephenville. Johnny, when was the last time Lamarck lost a playoff game? About December in uh, 94. <laughs> Who'd they lose to? <laughs> Your Stephenville Yellow Jacket. What was the time before that they lost in the playoffs? 93. Who'd they lose to? <laughs> you love to talk smack, don't you? <laughs> I just wait till after we win to talk. No, you were talking to the halftime. All right, actually, I was. It's just not on the air. Okay. 34-7, to Stephenville on top of Lamarck. The three-year reign will come to an end. They have unveiled the sign, Johnny. Stephenville football, 1998 Class 4A state champion. It's down on the sideline. That last scoring drive, five plays, 33 yards. Minute 53, Tinklenburg on the one-yard run. That brought to you by Walmart Vision Center. Well, we're going to tell you about something here in about two or three minutes since they unveiled that sign. You'll want to listen in. J.W. Boren, high, end over end, pooch kick to the middle of the field will be taken by Gamble. Gamble up to the 25, gets out to the 30, out to the 35, and he's tackled by Harris at the 39-yard line. He was tripped up on the play. 444 left. By the Jackets, uh, number 36 on the, uh, that's guard side, I believe. I was waiting to see uh, Brad guard side helped out with the tackle. You want to go ahead and announce it? Uh, let's wait till the two-minute mark. All right, you're going to want to stay tuned because if you want state championship apparel, baby, you can get it tomorrow, can't you, Johnny? Yep. We'll announce, make this announcement here in a few minutes. Stay tuned. We'll talk about it. First and ten, four of the Cougars at their own 37. Rolling is Gidry to the near side, looking to throw. Out in the flash, it's caught and dropped. Nehemiah Glover had plenty of yardage for the first down, and he just dropped the ball at the 50. 4.38 to go in the contest. Hey, look who's being interviewed on TV right now, Johnny. There's a big Seth. Seth <laughs> Luker. Big brother of Kellen Luker. 4.38 to go in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. Steam of 34. Lamarck 7. There he is down there by the five-yard line. How long has it been since Lamarck's gotten beaten this bad? It might have been 94. I think so in the state championship game. 
Kellen Loker, 279 yards throwing today, according to uh, up on the screen. Gidry looking to throw out in the flats behind the intended receiver, incomplete. Parker was intended receiver, and Johnny? Well, they bailed on their game plan early, didn't they? And that's how pretty many, much what they thought. Jacob, how many passes has Lamarck thrown in this football game? Uh, three of 14 for 24 yards, 34 yards, 29 yards, excuse me. I can't read. 14 passes, and they have 29 yards. Third down and 10, and John, with all these passes they're doing right now. <laughs> Stevenville's going to get the ball back. There's four and a half remaining, and the clock keeps stopping. Third down and 10 for the Cougars, straight drop. Gidry looking to throw back. He's setting up the screen to Parker, who drops the football. That was right in his hands. And, folks, let me tell you, it wasn't Parker. It was on the play. Mario Whitaker, the Cougars, have quit. Well, they're just doing something they're not used to doing. Sure. Well, the Stephenville coaches have left the booth, and they're joining the parade down on the sideline. Four and a half to go. and I talked to Coach Cervetto before the game, and I said, Coach, it's going to be 35-14. Hollinger is a good team. Yeah, no, it's a good team. That's all he'd ever say to me. Kuko has punt the ball to no one. Nobody gets back in coverage as this ball hits at the 30, bounces inside the 25, gets to the 21-yard line, and that's where it will come to rest. After the 40-yard kick, Stephen will start first and 10 at their own 41-yard line, and I would be willing to guess that Chris Evett will take the reins on the rest of the way in. Yeah, I think Kelly Luker's probably through. He's going to end the season and his career with some great record. Yes, Kellen is on the sideline. Boy, and Fox Southwest is really trying to get a timeout called by the uh, referee crew. I think they will take a timeout. We'll see. They will take an extended timeout. 4.17 to go in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. Stephen will 34, Lamarck 7. We're back in one minute on KSTV. There's a new star in town. Techstar Ford Lincoln Mercury. Come see the difference for yourself. New owners anxious to win your business with the best possible deals. New hours. Open weekdays till 7 and now open Saturday till 6. And most of all, new attitude. You'll love dealing with the friendly people at Techstar. If you don't buy from us, it won't be because of the price. Techstar, Ford, Lincoln, Mercury, Stephenville. Whether on or off the field, success requires focus, knowledge, and action. At Investment Centers of America, we focus on your goals, offer you our cumulative knowledge of investments and recommended actions that fit your objectives. We enjoy being your coach, but you're the quarterback. After all, it is your money. Investment Centers of America, Town and Country Bank Building, Stephenville. Investment Centers of America, we know the territory. Welcome back, Texas Stadium, 417 to go. Since the beginning of the second quarter, the Lamarck offense has been limited to 41 yards of total offense. It has just been a manhandling by the Steamville Yellow Jackets. Well, you know the old cliche in sports, Boots. If um, offense wins games, defense wins championships, well, that was a great combination today because offense scored and the defense held them, and Steamville's going to be champions. Chris Evan is in the game at quarterback. Inside trap handoff to, is it Tinklenburg? Yes, it is. Yep. Tinklenburg takes a handoff for no gain. It'll set up second down and 10, and the Jackets will just try to run some clock. Yeah, they're happy with where it is right now. 34-7 to 7 is fine. Thank you. Stephenville has outscored Lamarck since the beginning of the second quarter, 34 to nothing. 34 to 7, our score right now with 350 and counting. And J-Dub will... End the season if Steamville doesn't score again with 85 extra points and 69 in a row. So that's a second place in both of those in the state. Handoff over the right side, it's right. I think but, the offense jumped, didn't but, it? But, uh, yes, you're correct. Uh, flags down on the play. Consecutive extra points. He's in second place all by himself, J.W. And season extra points. With 85? 85. He's in second all by himself. Man, that's some great, great numbers for a lot of Stephenville athletes this year. And you, look at there, look at the sign on TV. Looker, 82-96 for his career. That is fantastic, 8,296 yards. 
Wow. All-time leading passer in Class 4A everything. 5A, 3A, 2A, 1A, across the board, all classifications, career in Texas high school history. So what does that mean he has? Right. Gets the hand up out across the 21 to the 22-yard line goes Kevin. So Luker ends with 280-something, is that right? I think I saw 287 is yep. what they stated him well, with. Well, let me tell you, he needed he needed like 309 to be the national season season record, single season record. How about that? Should we get the word down? <laughs> no, I, I think he wants the ring. Hey, besides that, Texas is the world. As far as we're <laughs> concerned. Well, there's a timeout. Lamarck takes a timeout. They're trailing 34 to 7 with 2:47 to go in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. We'll take a 30-second timeout. We're back right after this. Once again, it's time for us to show our support for Yellow Jacket football. That means a lot of traveling. The all-new '99 Chevy Silverado pickup will get you there safely, in comfort, and in style. I invite you to stop by and see our staff about this all-new Chevy truck. And when you do, you will meet a staff that genuinely cares about you and your family. We consider ourselves family and encourage you to do the same. From all of our staff to you, travel safely and go Jackets! There are a lot of good reasons to have insurance. Whether you call them Michael or Ashley, Lexi or Scott. And because you want to be there for them, your State Farm agent is there for you with the Family Insurance Checkup. It allows you to see how your coverage measures up and pick the plan that's right for your family's needs. So call for your free family insurance checkup today. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The, side, the banner on the sidelines says Stephenville Football, 1998 Division II, Class 4A state champions, powered by Hammer Strength. Did you see the other sign by the tunnel, what it says? Powered by Hammer Strength and Metallica. Metallica. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that makes engineer Justin McClure happy. Yeah. Wright takes the handoff forward for one yard. It'll set up fourth down and eight, and the Jackets uh, uh, will just let... Time come on, roll off and come on, we'll, Lamar Cougars. Uh, don't take you, a timeout. you win with class, you should lose with class. One timeout remaining. They do not take the timeouts. There was a little punching going on after that play. And if you're going to win them and enjoy them, you also have to lose them with class. 219 and counting. Stephenville 34, Lamar 7. Here in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter, Evett getting set to punt. Lamarck is coming with an all-out rush. They don't have anybody back. Snap back to Luker. He gets it away. To Evett. Excuse me, Evett does. Well, let Luker punt. That'd be fun. Bounces inside the 40, inside the 35, down to the 30, inside the 30, down to the 29. That's a long punt. 46 yards well, for Boots, Evett. Let's break them out, Boots. I'm breaking them out right now. All right. What a, what a pass this information along to you. Hey, Steve Ross, get up here so you can get your Oh, he's out. got his with him. Ross, break it out, baby. Show everybody on the sideline. These are your official 1998 Stephenville Class 4A State Championship hats. Everybody get one. Oh, yeah. And let me tell you, the state caps and shirts will go on sale tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., at Coyote Design in the Stephenville Plaza Shopping Center. Now, this is the official Stephenville Athletic Booster Club hat. And also, on the sideline, the cheerleaders are wearing the official T-shirt sponsored by the Stephenville Athletic Booster Club. Is that it over there, Jay? Yeah, let's pull that out. I, I don't. We can turn it right side out now, Boots. All right. I want to show this to you. This is pretty nice. Straight up the middle on the play, and I believe there was a fumble on the play. Stephenville may have recovered. Stephenville has. Stephenville gets on the football. 1998 state champion yellow jacket T-shirt. Those are good looking. Wow. And these all are available. Say that again, Johnny. Uh, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. at Coyote Design there in the Stephenville Shopping Plaza. They will go on sale. Those are official Stephenville Athletic Booster Club uh, caps and shirts. And Steve Ross, you like your cap, buddy? Where is he? Ross, where are you? I'm down here on the sidelines. I'm trying not to get run over. Do you like your cap, buddy? Oh, I love the cap boots. Get a picture of that on TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're asking a lot. <laughs> There's a timeout taken on the field. The ball after the uh, turnover goes to the Jackets at the Cougar. 
Yes. Cougar 30-yard line, and uh, that's where Steve Mo will get the ball with 147 sure. remaining, and they will they'll just take three knees. Remember, we are going to go. We're going to go to Steve Ross here in just a moment. You're going to make your way down to talk with Coach Bryles. You'll probably get to do that out on the field tonight, today, Boots. And uh, we're also going to take the opportunity to let Ross talk to a few some of the players. Yes, and that's something we don't usually do because. We just don't individualize players, but it's a state championship, so go ahead and talk yeah. to a lot of people that made this possible as the uh, Lamarck scouts or coaches from up in the booth are starting to leave now. Yeah. Well, hey, they've had a great run, folks. And and let the debate start, John. Who is the team in Class 4A of the 90s? I think it's even right now. You next, get, next year it probably solves it. Yes, I think you're right. Ebbett is under center. First and 10 at the Cougar 30-yard line. Hand off over the right side right. Right bust down to the 28-yard line. He is hit right there. A gain of about two. It'll set up second oh down and God. eight. Number 54 for Lamarck makes the tackle and bends over and bows to the crowd. Why? T.J. Bellard. <laughs> Son, I don't think your coach wants to see you doing that when you're getting beat 34-7. to seven. Boy, look up there. Uh, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Second down and eight for the Jackets. 116 and counting Stephen Bill. Three state championships in the last six years now for the Jackets. Evett will go to a knee. 105 and counting, and we'll see how long the referee takes before he whistles the ball back in play. You know, Boots, uh, back in, I think it was 81, I was broadcast, I got to broadcast the year that Eastland won the state championship in Class 2A, and their quarterback that year was uh, Jay Hess, who was the son of, of the coach. And on that in that game in Waco that day, he set a, the single-season passing mark of the classification, and they won the state championship. Well, what a blessing today to get to see Kellen Luker do the same thing and win a state championship as well. Third down and 10. Evick goes to a knee, and he'll hold the football. Folks, that will do it. 20 seconds and counting, and you can hear the party has started. Steve Mill players coming out onto the field. The Lamar Jinx continues. Steve Mill will win the state championship. 3-0 showing on the clock over Lamar. 34-7. Three state championships in the last six years, baby. We'll take a break. The post game shows up next on KSTV. We're back in two minutes. It's the final. Stephenville, the state champions, and coach, you play like state champs today. Well, I mean, we act like state champions, and that's that's the thing that I'm proud of. Our players play with a lot of class. Uh, you know, they they represent our community well. They represent our, represent our school well, and you know, I'm just thankful to be a part of it. I just feel blessed to be involved with them. Uh, they're a great bunch of young men. They've done everything we've asked them to do since last January to get to this point, and, you know, this makes it all worthwhile. You guys fell down 7 nothing, but you didn't hit the panic button. You look very calm out there. Well, I mean, you know, we've got a lot of confidence in our offense and our defense, so we feel like, you know, seven points is not going to, you know, cost us a football game. We're going to put some points on the board, and, you know, I think this worked out well for us. We had some players come through and really make big plays both sides of the ball, and, you know, we're just thankful to be in the situation that we're in. Third one for you. How does it feel? Any different? Oh, they all feel great. You know, I mean, this this is type of thing. You know, when you get in the playoffs and make a run like this, it kind of turns into an endurance contest. You have to stay focused. You have to stay fresh, and that's something that we did as a team and as a staff. And you know, now we'll go relax and you know enjoy this victory and you know get ready to go again next year. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate the coverage. All right, Art Bryles, the head coach of the Stephenville Yellow Jackets, 34 to seven, the final state champions. I'm Rob Willman, with nothing but sports productions. If children are a blessing, then grandchildren are truly a gift. They renew our hope, they recapture our youth. And as grandparents, you want to give them something in return. Your local State Farm agent has just the thing. It's the gift of life insurance. And as your grandchildren grow, you can add to the policy to help give them financial security for many years to come. So let your nearby State Farm agent help you ensure that their days will be as bright as they've made yours. 